Okay, the meeting will be in order. This is the preliminary business meeting, the 72nd World Science Fiction Convention. I'm uh, Tom Leeslake, your chair. At the rear we have uh, Lisa Hayes, the official videographer. Uh, to my right, uh, your left, is Jill Eastlake, who is the timekeeper. And on my left, your right, is Linda Denneroff, the secretary who actually does all the work. <laughs> um, I'd like to get some uh, preliminary things out of the way here. Uh, one is that if you have a uh, obnoxious uh, sound making device, you should avoid using it to make sound during the meeting. Maybe your cell phone should be set to vibrate or something like that. Uh, we are being recorded in the back, and we might occasionally have to pause for a technical reason to do that. Uh, anybody can record or photograph the meeting if they choose to do so. Uh, the meeting can order that to cease for some period, but uh, we never actually have it, I think, at least not that I can recall. Um, there are usually ribbons for people who attend uh, the, World's Act, the business meeting, and I understand that such ribbons exist, they just aren't actually here yet, but we'll see that. So presumably uh, tomorrow or something, uh, such ribbons will exist. It's a plot to make you all come back tomorrow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that, you know, I could uh, speak uh, to a greater or lesser extent about uh, procedure, but uh, uh, for the people, a lot of people I think have been here before. How many people have uh, not been to a business, what was this business meeting before? Uh, um, welcome, okay. And uh, so, so there was a panel yesterday on uh, procedure. Um, we tend to follow Robert's Rules of Order fairly closely with our own variations that are in the standing rules that are in the uh, souvenir book uh, and we're also in progress report uh, 2, or report 2, had those in it. Uh, so although we, we follow the rules pretty rigorously, uh, I, I try to apply them with some liberality when appropriate and uh, if you have, if you want to do something and you don't know how to do it or confused about the situation, uh, within reason, you can certainly ask what's going on and I'll try to answer you or assist you in composing a motion or something like that. Uh, but we do have a lot of business, so we do have to kind of move along here. And so I, I tend not to uh, pause for great periods of time. Like if I call for objections, I tend to, or something like that, I tend to move on pretty quickly. Uh, if you aren't happy when I call for objections, you should indicate that like right away, uh, but actually until we've really, I sort of gotten to the end and stating the next item, you can usually still object to the previous one. So it doesn't have to, you don't have to do it before I begin the next uh, thing we're going to do, it's, but you have a little bit after that. Uh, so to get recognition, if you want to speak uh, or make a motion, uh, the best thing to do is stand up uh, and uh, you can say, Mr. Chair, or something like that, whatever, Mr. Chairman whatever you feel like. <laughs> hey, you bit, but no, no, no. Uh, but it, it's important to know that we don't keep a cue or anything. We alternate between speeches in favor or against. If you want to move some cross procedural amendment, like amend or refer to a committee, you can do that either time, but that's not considered to be for or against. Um, but you have to wait until the previous speaker has finished. And the way you can tell is they sit down. <laughs> Uh, the fact that they have paused does not necessarily mean they finished speaking. Mr. Chairman, yeah. stepping away from the microphone. Uh, stepping away from the microphone we work here. Yes, yeah, so we, we do have this problem of acoustics, and um, this, uh, the camera is catching the area, essentially the field of view of the table in front here. We have a microphone here. If you're just making a motion, it's some simple motion, then I will repeat it normally anyway, so you're, you're fine. But if you want to actually speak and debate, and say something in, in favor or against, some motion, then coming up to the microphone would be an excellent idea. Uh, so, um, I don't know if there's anything else I need to do right now. The primary, uh, uh, the, the first priority of the preliminary business meeting is to set the debate times for items which will come up tomorrow. 
at the main business meeting, or at the, to sort of dispose of them in some cases if we can at, the, at this meeting. And uh, the, the first items on the agenda are the constitutional amendments which were passed uh, last year at uh, Lone Star Con in order to come up uh, to this meeting for ratification. And uh, in each case, I will propose a time limit. Uh, if people don't like it, uh, they can certainly suggest another. If people really don't hesitate to do so. Um, so I have uh, come up with ones, and uh, I think they're somewhat strict, except in the first case, because the first item of business always seems to attract more uh, debate. <laughs> we'll start off with a lot of energy before they get worn down. I don't mean. So item 1.1, short title of two-thirds is enough, part one. Uh, I propose a debate time limit of eight minutes. Is there any other values proposed? Sure. Two minutes. Uh, any other values? Okay. Uh, we will vote between eight and two. All those in favor of eight, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two. I believe the twos have it, so the late time is set at two minutes. Uh, item 1.2, uh, short title, Two Thirds is Enough, Part Two. Uh, I propose a uh, debate time of four minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes for the vote. Any other values? We will vote. Between, and if it's not seeing any other values or debate, we'll vote between four and two. All those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two minutes. Uh, thank you. Overwhelmingly for two minutes. Item 1.3, short title, A Matter of Trust. I uh, propose a time limit of four minutes for this. Any other values proposed? Two minutes. Two minutes. Any debate? All those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those in favor of two minutes. Thanks. Four minutes has it. Wistless Accountability, item 1.4. The Wistless Accountability Act of 2013 is actually the short title. I propose a big time of six minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Other values? Four. Four. Five. Okay. Yeah. So basically, we, we, unless there's some objection, when we have multiple values, we usually do the procedure called filling the blank, which means we vote on them in some kind of logical order, uh, vote for and against each value until a value achieves a majority, and we stop with that value. And in the case of time limits, we start with the longest uh, time. Values are six, five, four, and two. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and it's six minutes. Next item. Uh, excuse me, did somebody just enter the meeting? Uh, donate. So the uh, attendance lists are work. Oh, they're in the corner. So if you, want to, if you want to mark the attendance list, it's right there. Uh, you're welcome. Happy to embarrass you this way anytime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other people who haven't signed the attendance list are welcome to do so. Wait a second until our secretary. Silence the chairman's cell phone. So everyone remember, please silence your cell phone. <laughs> Next item is 1.5, uh, best fan artist. Uh, this is an amendment. So this is correct in the agenda, it's bottom of page one. But if you happen to be referring to the souvenir book, the annotation as to what text is changed with being inserted or changed is incorrect in the souvenir book. But just follow the agenda, which I assume you have in your hand, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I suggest six minutes for this. Any other 
audience suggested? Two minutes. Anything else? Four. Okay. Six, four, two. Anything else? All those in debate? All those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed to six minutes? I believe the no's have it. So we'll continue. Uh, those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and it's time to be limited to four minutes. Six minutes for this. Two. Two. One. one. Oh. We have six, two, one. Is there any other? Okay. Anything else? Any debate on the debate time? Okay. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, the no's have it. Uh, those in favor of five minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Have it. Those in favor of two minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Yeah, the ayes have it, and it's big time to set it two minutes. And uh, the last business passed on by a 1.7. Short title, we don't need another hero. So uh, there was some question about this as to why 3.2.1 through 3.2.4 are listed here, but the subsequent 3.2.Xs are not listed here. And um, I'm not entirely sure why it's that way, but, oh, it's on its, I mean, the agenda is 3.4, which is actually correct. Right? Yeah, so, so the 3.4 numbering is correct of the agenda. Nevertheless, the question was why the subsequent 3.x.1 <laughs> were not listed. I guess 3.4.1 were not listed. Uh, and um, what happened, well, what is intended? And, and the, as far as I can determine, and the, what we're going on is that the intent is really to amend only uh, the dot 3 uh, section. That is, only 3.4.3 is changing, and all of the subsequent change sections, 3.4.x, including those not listed here, uh, remain as is. So the strikeout and insert is just as shown in 3.4.3, just to clarify what's going on there. Uh, so, in any case, we need to set a debate limit for this, and uh, unless the business meeting wishes otherwise, I set the debate limit at 12 minutes. There other suggestions? Five. Five. Anything else? Okay. Those in favor of 12, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Uh, Nays have it. Those in favor of 5, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. We can just set it five minutes. And now move on to section two. <clears throat> yeah. These are the five that's satisfying. <clears throat> so, uh, 2.1.1, short title, popular ratification. It modifies the U.S. The US Constitution. Shown here <laughs> uh, by striking out and inserting words in various sections um, in uh, 6.6, .6, section on amendments to the Constitution. And uh, the concept is that instead of Constitution amendments being passed at one business meeting and ratified at the following business meeting, they would be passed at one business meeting and then ratified by a, uh, a popular uh, referendum among the society members. Um, I guess. Yeah. 
This is the uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, given the complex nature of this, uh, I was suggesting that if there were questions about the effect or how it was written, that it would be worthwhile for this meeting to consider this motion as if in committee of the whole for a few minutes with me holding the floor and addressing questions. Uh, I don't know if there are technical questions about it, however, given yeah. the nature of it. Uh, number regular. I do have a question. So. Okay, well, we, 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 the in questions we want to do that. Uh, do we want to consider this informally for a bit as a, as a committee of the whole? Uh, is there a second for doing that? Uh, all those in favor of uh, entering the committee of the whole? Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. We're in the classic committee of the whole. And I, I just, it, it, unless there's, um, the intent is to not discuss the merits of the motion at all, if we can avoid that. Um, the, I, I wish to, uh, Mr. Chairman, I wish to entertain questions on the effect of this and try and address them. And uh, I, I, the chair has to call on people, but I'll, yeah. I will, I will blanketly yield the time for this purpose. Okay. okay. Uh, he did say, as quasi committee of the whole, is what he actually said, although he put it as committee of the whole. And in quasi committee of the whole, the chairman of the business meeting. I'm sorry, I just said. If the question is of any complexity, you yeah. can come up and use a mic. Go ahead. Um, my only question is that the, uh, in the 6.6.1, it is said that the motion is ratified by a simple majority at the business meeting, and you're changing it to ratified by a vote of the members. What is required for, like, it doesn't specify majority. Shouldn't we do that? Uh, item, Mr. Chairman, items, uh, uh, element 6.6.5. Any amendment that receives more yes votes than no votes shall be ratified. Am, am I correct? We've got to deal with that by themselves also. Sorry. Yeah. John Pomerantz, am I correct then that ratification would be done solely by ballot and not at a vote in the business meeting under your proposal? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that is indeed the attempt. It is intended that this would be elected, that motions would, or yeah, proposals would be ratified by ballot vote of the entire membership of the following year's roll call. Very similarly to how we currently elect select sites, but some of you may be aware that we used to select sites at, by show of hands at the business meeting. We don't do that anymore. Or by ballot at the business meeting. Yes, Dave. Yeah, Danielle. No. Okay. Uh, would it be feasible to amend this so that we required that a business meeting make the initial vote, that a subsequent business meeting make a secondary vote the next year, followed by a mail ratification? Uh, Mr. For the record, the question was whether it would be possible to change this so that you would have the required passage of one business meeting, ratification of the second business meeting, and then re-ratification by a vote of the society, so there would be three stages of approval. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I tend, to, for shorthand purposes, I call that two plus one, whereas the proposal as written as one plus one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see nothing infeasible about amending this proposal so that it becomes we exactly as Mr. Yalo said, we would, uh, instead of changing the current system from vote one year and ratify by the members the next year, we would vote one year, ratify at the business meeting the next year, and submit to the members of the third year. Yes, that would extend the ratification process to three years. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody else has asked what we have. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Joni Dasha, how does this vote then proceed, the one the written vote? Not uh, Mr. Chairman, the question was, what would be the mechanics of actually voting? Yeah, the, que yes. the question was, what are the mechanics of this popular ratification vote among the membership of the society? Item 6.6.3, .6 or paragraph 6.6.3 .6 in this, ratification voting should be available at least during the same time as the site selection and ratification ballots should be distributed at the same time as site selection ballots. Uh, essentially, it would be, uh, you would be able to vote by ballot either in advance or at the con, similar to the way we do site selection voting. It would be pieces of paper distributed in advance or at the con. All right, so what I didn't quite clarify is who's collecting and tabulating these? 
it would be, uh, uh, the question was who would collect and tabulate the votes? This would be a responsibility of the administering Worldcon, just as is currently a responsibility of the current Worldcon to run site selection. So you're not right. saying this is necessarily site selection, it's just the style of it? It is in the style of it. Is not, it is not the, and Mr. Chairman, it is not the intent of this motion to assign detailed <laughs> operational responsibilities to individual members of Worldcon committees. It is intended to say you are going to do this approximately the same way you do that. Okay. How you actually implement it as a Worldcon committee is up to you. For those of you who you do not know, know, I am the site I'm selection I'm admin for Saskatchewan. Let's see if we have another question here. If you want the floor, you should stand. Okay. Back. 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 What's the impetus, What's uh, Kevin Stewart, what's the impetus for this change? I mean, the current system doesn't seem to be broken in my mind. That seems to get into debate. Yes, know. Mr. Chairman, I do not intend to address questions asking the substantive purpose of the motion at this time. Yeah. Winston Matthew, why is it paper? Why not electronic? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I, I don't really want to get into implementation details of the motion. That is substantive. I don't have I don't have a strong opinion on it, but it is intended uh, basically because. Uh, but the quickest version of it is it is defined in terms of how we do site selection voting. Not saying that the site selection administrator must run it, but it is defined in terms of how do we do site selection. We would administer the ratification elections in the same way, if we sh uh, which does actually leave possibility of electronic voting, just as electronic voting for site selection is potentially possible. It would be left up to the administering convention to deal with it. Your name? Can you use the mic? You're going to need to talk to a microphone because no one can hear you except me. Okay. Is it the intention then if this takes place to uh, place all the um, items of the list of constitution subject to ratification to have them printed on the ballot form along with the uh, proposed amendments? I'm not sure what the question is. Anything that was going to be, just as we currently get an agenda with those items that are up for ratification, the members of the following WorldCon would get a list of here are the proposed changes that are up for ratification, yes or no. Um, hey. Mr. Chairman, um, 6.6.2 in the proposal reads, any member eligible to cast a site selection ballot may vote on the ratification of pending constitutional amendments in the same manner as section 4.1. 4.1 is site selection. However, no fee beyond membership in the administering convention shall be required to vote on the ratification. <laughs> Chairman, I wish to foreshadow that I will be introducing a motion when it becomes in order to appoint a committee to come back with a completed two plus one motion using Kevin's terminology. And I would be recommending that that committee report back next year because given the complexity of this motion, I do not believe we can disentangle things pick up all the technical points and come back with, with a perfected 2.1 motion if we have to do it on the fly. And would you like to move to the committee of the whole ride? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, we're out of the advisory committee of the whole. Um, and the uh, chair recognizes the chair. I wish to make a motion that we refer this to a committee to report back with a perfected 2.1 amendment uh, to the Constitution, standing rules, and many other documents. Uh, that committee to report back next year because I don't believe we can get it fixed in time. Is there a second to this motion? Second. A uh, debate on the motion to commit? Chairman, I suggest the committee consist of myself and Mr. Yellow.
And not only the concept of that idea, but some humble committee of exactly two people, so that there's some possibility of a deadline. <laughs> Is there any further debate? Uh, yes. I think Mr. Yellen might have meant 2.1.1. He said 2.1.1. He said 2 plus 1. You have to care for the screen lines. There's no, no, no periods in there, only a plus sign. Okay. Is there any further debate on the motion to commit? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because uh, Josh Prendel. Who's against? Um, the, um, the problem, no? Yeah, Sure. Um, uh, do we really need to make it harder to amend the Constitution? Is there a vote in, uh, that was, against referring, I guess. Is there a vote in favor, uh, especially in favor of referring to committee? Parliamentary inquiry. Yeah. If we uh, don't accept the current motion to refer, uh, where does the large motion? If we don't accept the motion to refer, then this will come up uh, tomorrow for a debate and uh, possible approval. Or and it would, uh, you know, we could we could do various lots of things tomorrow. <laughs> uh, a vote, uh, especially a speech in favor of the motion to commit, in favor of committing. possibilities in addition to one plus one and two plus one that ought to be considered. A uh, speech against uh, committee? committee? Yes? Martin Easterbrook. Uh, any two plus one proposal automatically means we can't get any new and legislation through for three years, which is a really long time to do that. Again, a speech against uh, turning to Britain? If nobody wants to speak, we can go ahead and vote on this. Yeah. The person in the back there. I just want to add to what was just said, that it would take three years um, to pass, but with the committee, then it becomes four years, so we're extending this process. It's becoming longer and longer and more complicated and um, much more difficult for people to participate, and the whole idea of the emotion is to allow people to participate. So we're making things extremely complicated, and um, it, it sort of excludes people, I think. So um, I am against this idea. Uh, a speech uh, in favor of the Senate Committee? Yeah. One flaw with one plus one proposal that I'm concerned about is that there's no way to make a perfecting amendment. Very frequently we pass something and then when we've had a chance to think about it, we think of one or two little things we could tweak. And um, I don't think there's any way to do that, and I, I stand corrected, but it doesn't seem like there's any way to do that in the current proposal. Speech uh, against the Senate Committee. This is just speeches for and against the referral. Well, Harris, uh, I think this meeting in general has a responsibility to at least explore some of the issues. If we do choose to refer to committee tomorrow after some debate, a, you know, will our chance to express some views. B, the committee will have some input to work on. I think in recent years we've had a little too much enthusiasm for, oh, we don't, that's too hard to talk about in this meeting, let's go refer to a committee, you can worry about it for us. We are the people who are meant to think about this, and if we're in this room, we should be invested the time to think about it. I move to amend this motion by striking the purpose of the day and merely replacing it with refer on this post. Is there a second? Second. Is there any objection to removing the specification that the committee is required to come up with a two plus, two plus one, but just a general for committee? Hearing no objection, the motion to commit is so amended. Uh, the speech is still on the motion to commit. Is there a speech, based on that, is there a speech in favor of the motion to commit? Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, all those who still wish to speak to the question of committing, please raise your hand. Uh, 
Yeah. No, that's not what we're doing now. Um, it appears to be nobody wishing to speak. Uh, oh, he does. It does. I'm sorry. Uh, I said hold okay. uh, Thank you. Um, so there's a uh, we'll vote on the motion to call the question. All those in favor? Mr. Chairman, I believe I believe there are members who are confused about what you're stating. Sure. Uh, am I right? This is a parliamentary inquiry. That under our rules, when there's a motion to call the question or end debate, the chairman is asked uh, has to ask for a show of hands of those members who still want to speak to the question. Those are not people trying to gain the floor. It's just a quick show of hands of people who still wish to speak. Am I right? <laughs> you are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, the idea being to provide the members with more information to on which to base their vote on whether to call the question or not. Uh, so, those in favor of calling the question, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? There being more than two-thirds in favor, the question is called on the motion to commit. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to refer this to a committee to report back next year, please raise your hand. Uh, next year. All those in favor of referring it to a committee to report back. Is 
there a second? Second. Yeah. To move and second it to refer this to a committee to report to tomorrow. Uh, is there any debate on this motion? Seeing none, those in favor of the committee, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and so be referred to the committee to report back to the main business meeting tomorrow. Uh, in the absence of other instructions, uh, the chair will appoint the committee and uh, the chairman thereof, and the people should come up to the head table after this meeting to volunteer if they wish to do so. Uh, the committee will include the maker of the motion. Do we can move on to the next item, please. Yes. No, no. Uh, so if somebody wishes to set the debate time for 12 minutes, they can still do that. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 12, 15, 24. Any other values? Yes? 40. 40. <laughs> Any other items? 30. 30? Yes. Will the report of the committee be part of the debate time or will that be separate? Uh, I mean, there will hopefully be a written report and you can read it, but the, yes, the, the, the report of the committee is the extent that the committee speaks in favor of its report or something like that will be part of the debate time. Yep. Well, since I cannot guarantee when the committee would actually produce this report, I would, I would say that I can't guarantee that it will be available in written form. If they, since, you know, finish their deliberations one minute before the meeting is called to order, it might be difficult to do that. But uh, if you, well, one member of the committee is known who wants to say something. Mr. Chairman, since you designated me first, and then I believe me to be the chairman of the committee, the committee will take every effort to get the information to the secretary early enough to get it into a printed agenda tomorrow. Inasmuch as the chairman of the committee to which it's been referred has been a business meeting secretary and knows her pain. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else before we vote on debate time limits? Uh, starting with the largest number going down. The 40, 30, 24, 15, 12. <laughs> Those in favor of 40 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, <laughs> guys. Those in favor of 30 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, nays have it. Those in favor of 24 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. And the great time is set at 24 minutes. Don't you know, somebody came here a couple minutes ago, I don't know if we saw it, held up a five-minute sign. <laughs> we actually had two sessions, so that, that might have been like, not only one of the programming slot sessions. So, you have to flip a few pages to get to the next item. Alright, the next is 2.1.2, whose title is incorrect here, the correct title is Cuba Nominations for NASTIC Members. And um, I have set a debate time of 12 minutes for this item. And number 5 is suggested. And 15 is suggested. 10. 8. Okay. Any other values? Okay. 15, 12, 10, 8, 5. Uh, those in favor of uh, 15 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, no, that's not it. Those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? No, that's not it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. Big time to set it. 10 minutes. The next item of business is 2.1.3, short title. A story by any other name. I've uh, set a big time limit of 12 minutes for this item. Are there other values people would like to have considered? 20? 5? Any other values? Okay. 
Those in favor of 20 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, Nays have it. Those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. It's at 12 minutes. Uh, the next item is uh, performers are fans too. This is 2.1.4 on page 10 of the agenda. That adds a new category. Uh, best fan and performer. A performing artist in any medium whose work has appeared at conventions or through other public non-professional display during the previous calendar year. I have set the debate time on this at 10 minutes. 20. Five. Hearing no other values, those in favor of 20 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The names have it. Those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. What about the 12? Well, thank you. Those opposed? Uh, 10. It's majority in favor of 10. Um, is there a claim that there was some value that I didn't pay attention to or something? I think there was some to do students setting 12. Right, I dated to 10 for this one. Right. I think that's not usually as a result. Succeeded in defeating Okay. Uh, 10 minutes for that. So, I think we've done pretty well here to get through that. Um, we are now on section 3 committee reports and motions. Um, we only consider the motions at the time the committee uh, report comes up for motions proposed by committees. Uh, the first committee reporting is the Mark Production Committee. First, Mr. Chairman, a question of privilege. I thought we had a total of three hours allocated for this. Is it only two? Or we only have two? No, no. It's, we have, uh, I was saying we have two programming spots. Oh, well, we have three. Oh, I see. We have, we have, we have two one. We have until 1 o'clock, is that correct? Right. Fine. I don't, Mr. No, it's, Mr. Chairman, because when I saw that, I wasn't oh. sure our response. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, as you know, Kevin Stanley, not everybody knows that. Most of you know. I'm chairman, I am the current chairman of the Wisp Smart Protection Committee. The, uh, for the benefit of those of you who don't, haven't been following along all the notes, the Mark Protection Committee is the only Wisp Committee uh, directly chartered by the Constitution as opposed to appointed by the business meeting and created to the site selection process. It is responsible for managing the intellectual property of WISPA, specifically the service marks on words like Worldcon and Hugo Award and others. I'm not certainly not going to read the entire report, which is rather long and is in the back of the agenda, but I read something I do wish to call a couple of things to the committee to the meeting's attention. Just a second, I forgot my notes. First and most importantly is that the Mark Protection Committee, in conjunction with LonCon 3 and with the very, very valuable and timely assistance of two past Worldcon running organizations, CanSmoff, Anticipation, and uh, Skiffy, LACon 4, fought off this year a very significant threat to the Hugo Awards by an organization. Now, you will not have heard much of this because much of the work was going on quietly and we had no desire to get a lot of publicity on it. Uh, but it is included in the report and has to do with a company called Fancaster and with the Hugo Award for Best Fancast. Earlier this year, a company in the United States called Fancaster, which uh, is apparently engaged in the process of attempting to monetize fan-produced podcasts primarily in sports, but also sells some sort of product that has the word Fancaster on it, uh, sent a cease and desist letter to LonCon3 saying that Fancaster has an EU service mark on the word Fancaster and therefore, LonCon must immediately cease and desist presenting a Hugo Award for Best Fancast. Well, LonCon contacted the Mark Protection Committee, which are effectively co-litigants co to the extent we are, uh, this is legal, and engaged solicitors here in the UK. The Mark Protection Committee worked with our uh, United States IP attorney, Esther Horwich. 
and a lot of calls and emails and research was done. The advice of counsel was that Fancaster's claim does not is, is not really that good and uh, at, before such time as the demand letter from Fancaster expired, Loncon 3 working on their behalf and on behalf of Elizabeth NDC responded to Fancaster several months ago saying effectively we don't believe your claim is good and we are not going to stop giving out best Fancast. We have not heard from them, from Fancaster, since that time. But just getting to that point cost over 8,000 pounds in legal fees in the UK and a couple thousand dollars in US legal fees. The US legal fees were paid for by the Market Protection Committee's general fund. 8,400 pounds is around 15,000 US dollars. Lancon 3 paid their entire amount of traditional donation to WSPIS, a fee that is normally paid after the Worldcon when they know they have the money. In addition, they paid the 1,400 pounds of GS, I mean of VAT. Um, that left a little bit over $10,000 US. Um, Canspoff donated 5,000 Canadian dollars toward it. And <coughs> Skiffy donated 5,000 US dollars to it. And I will note, uh, looking at their financial report, that that $5,000 not only, uh, that because it was done after their fiscal year closed in our report, it not only ate up the, the tiny amount of money of LA Con reportable funds, but it was also Skiffy non con funds, mostly, that was covered this. And there was also a couple hundred dollars from the WSPIS NPC general fund. And if it weren't for the fact that OSSECON 4 uh, liquidated their organization and donated what was left of their funds to the NPC, our ongoing operating expenses would also have brought, and, uh, would have brought us down to very little money in the NPC's accounts. We have, uh, <coughs> Our financial report is listed in here. Subsequent to the report you see published, we've also received a $3,750 $3, donation from Lone Star Con, uh, and that's been very helpful as well. The point is, is that there is no way that the Market Protection Committee could have supported this effort without the really timely efforts of WorldCon committees, and that's good, but it also points out some other issues we have. Now, the Mark Protection Committee believes at this point we have accomplished what we set out to do with protecting the, our best fan cast Hugo and Hugo Awards as a whole. Um, this effort is somewhat on hold any further than that, pending any further actions by Fancaster. But the Mark Protection Committee, in addition to the items you see in the report, also does believe that it is important that WSPIS revisit the funding mechanism for the Market Protection Committee, which has not changed since 1984 that I'm aware of. Um, and the MPC does intend to spend this next year preparing a long term, which is to say approximately 10 year planning budget showing what our costs are, because our costs run over a 10 year cycle approximately due to the various renewal fees on service marks. And in particular, we do very much want to begin the process of registering our marks EU wide. Because the only country that we currently have trademark registration protection is the United States. And that leads into my other point here as I put down my notes. The U.S. Patent and Trademark Office somewhat reluctantly, but is prepared to deal with unincorporated associations. No other country in which WSPIS has a desire to register service marks, and our policy has been to register them based on the number of world cons having been held there, and for this purpose, treating the EU as a single country for this purpose. Uh, EU is actually the second highest priority. None of these other countries will deal with unincorporated associations. They said we would either have to find individual human beings to act as agents, or we need to create some sort of legal entity that can be recognized by those. The MPC has discussed this at some length and will continue to do so, but has asked uh, for some guidance from the business meeting and therefore introduces as a resolution on page 13. And I do now make on behalf of the committee the motion uh, labeled, with it good, 
that uh, resolved that the business, business meeting recommends that the Mark Protection Committee establish a Worldcon Intellectual Property Trust, or WIPIT, to act as a legal entity for holding title to WISPIS's service marks, such entity to be under the control of the Mark Protection Committee. And I do believe the, the argument for that resolution why I basically made it in advance of making the motion. Uh, and so it doesn't need a second, of course, because it's coming out of the committee, Mr. Chairman. Whoops. <coughs> Yes? You ought to come for the next call. Sure. I still have time. I'm going to wait the minutes for this. <laughs> I'm slightly in the corners being honored. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is David Lally, and I'm former chairman of the European Science Fiction Society, WSF's little brother. Due to certain financial circumstances next year, I am in a position to meet half cost mentioned in item 20, that is £4,500. 2250, I'm in a position to produce half of that cover of the amount, which means that you can probably file not only in the UK, but the entire EU, which is also the jurisdiction of PSS, subject to this WIPT idea, which is a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Secretary would like to get the ego of Brian, but I think it's been uh, that she can see your badge. So that was a speech in favor of this. A resolution. Uh, is there a speech against? No, sure. What would the proposed tax status of this trust be? Mr. Chairman, this resolution is not, we are not, have not yet researched all of the details of it. The implementation details are beyond the scope of the motion. This does not, this resolution does not establish it, nor does the NPC actually know exactly what it would do because it needs to deal with our U.S. attorney. It would be a U.S. legal entity because it, uh, we would have Esther Horwich work with us on it. So we do not know the answer to that exactly. There was a question. Uh, the Parliamentary Inquiry yeah. proposed to uh, what, what's the uh, effect of, uh, of a resolution with recommendation? Very little. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, establishing the sense, of, uh, the sense of the business meeting for the Department of Protection Committee? I would say that's correct, yes. Thank you. Uh, speech uh, in favor of the resolution? So, yeah. I establish a time limit of eight minutes. I don't think we'll need it. Uh, yes? I'll speak in favor. Okay.
far as stuff coming to the NPC, unless there are questions regarding the rest of the report, where that ends the report of the NPC. However, the chair will uh, yield to questions. Uh, one question. You, you talked about the litigation that's taking place to, uh, to today, and then you don't know about the future. What is the best expectation you have from the lawyers? Uh, we actually had uh, one of the solicitors is here at the convention, and she attended the NPC meeting. She's fairly confident that we're good at this point. Um, we did have the prospect of, you might say, going on the offensive, if you like, and filing an invalidity action to, to try and invalidate their EU service mark. That's also a very expensive proposition and also requires an entity of some sort, either an individual or legal entity. It didn't have to be in the uh, EU. Um, we are uncertain whether this is the correct use of a rather substantial sum of, of money that we do not have. <laughs> Are there any other questions for the Mark Fresh Committee? Yeah. Uh, is there a sense within the, the committee of uh, whether this would be based in the U.S. Uh, or in the EU and what the implications are about? The question was, would WIPIT be a, a, a U.S. or EU legal entity? It is based on our only uh, advice of, of both the U.K. solicitors and our U.S. counsel. Uh, it would be a U.S. entity. It is, a U.S. entity can, in fact, be uh, uh, own marks in the EU and other countries, but it just has to be some sort of legal entity that the bureaucracies are prepared to treat with. And, and uh, as a, as a follow-on question, does that have uh, further implications for uh, execution of the Market Protection Committee's duties for membership or anything like that? It, the, the question was, does this have any follow-on effects to the Market Protection Committee? We haven't explored all, the committee really has not explored all of the things. We were really looking to guidance of whether it was worthwhile for us to even chase the rest of this. Um, it is our expectation that any entity we would set up would be basically a, uh, an extension of the Market Protection Committee. The NPC would control whatever that entity was. So, for example, one possibility would be the, the trustees of the trust would simply be the members of the Market Protection Committee. Yeah. That's fine, though, this was Oh, we misspelled Esther's name. Oh, I'm sorry. So on page 50, it's uh, Horowitz, is H O R W I. It's which? Yeah. W I C H. I guess I should, while, while, they're deal while she's catching up on that, we had several of our service marks come due for renewal this year, and that's another drain of money. They have been renewed. Our domain names have been renewed for, that when they come up, we've been renewing them for five-year terms. Yep. Uh, part of that jury inquiry, uh, will the Mark Protection Committee elections uh, be held before or after we write a uh, loan of our application for Item 1.6. That's the one that removes the zone requirements for more protection. Uh, if we it doesn't matter. Uh, the effect of that would occur at the end of this business meeting in any case. So, yeah. The answer is before anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so you, the report is complete, right? The report, I'm not any further questions, Mr. Chairman. Right. Uh, we need to do nominations for the elected uh, slots in the Market Protection Committee. Uh, for information, the appointment, uh, where are we find the years here? On page, at the top of page 44 of the report is where we find the names of people going. Um, the appointment of Sandra Levy has, uh, is, uh, expires. Hang on, all these chairs are there. Sit down anywhere. <laughs> uh, the appointment of Sandra Levy uh, by Shai Khan Seven expires, and she leaves the committee. The, elect uh, the elected members whose terms end this year are uh, Warren Buff, Linda Dinneroff, and where's the first four? And David and David Hardy. Yes, I have the wrong set of glasses on here. I apologize. Thank you. Ah, that's right.
I still have the wrong set of glasses, but this is easier to read, yes. Yes, uh, yeah, so Linda Dinneroff, Dave McCarty, and Warren Buff, who are spread evenly among the existing zones, uh, their terms end this year, and uh, unless re-elected, and the appointment of Sandra Levy uh, expires, and we will, whoever is elected uh, to hold, to be the 2016 World Con will appoint a member to the committee. And our question. There's a, I think there's an error in this first list because I don't believe my appointment is through 2017. I believe it's a year short of that. No, okay. You know, yeah, Deb, okay. Deb Geisler is saying that her appointment is actually through 2016, and that is correct because it's the same term as Long Con days. Yes, sorry. Um, as a follow on to that, on page 51 where it says site selection business, it's, it's asked for a report of the 2017 World Farm site selection. How can that be? Shouldn't it be the 2016? I'm sorry, I still can't hear What page again? Page 51, Bill Cast the Financial Reports, keep going. And it, I think this is Sunday, and it says report of the 2017 World Trans Site Selection. 51? Page 41, I'm sorry, or 51. Oh, my eyesight is not. It's just typos, just come up and see. Okay, sorry. I didn't know if that was a typo. I believe there's a number of errors on page 41, but we will not be getting to that until probably Sunday. So I decided it wasn't worthwhile going through and not to all. Sorry. Yes, um, orders of the day, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Let's get to the so, Thank you. Sorry. Uh, people have other corrections, for, especially for Section 5, which we won't be getting to today or tomorrow. They should I come up and tell the Secretary after this session. I think I'm done with the portion about the membership of the committee, so you can take the combinations now. Okay. Oh, what break is going for that moment here? Anyone who has not signed one of the attendance lists, it would not be terribly disruptive if you came up and did that now. There's one there and one there.
So what is that tomorrow or whatever? So indeed, we are now at section 3.2. 14. Okay, 14. Actually, 3.2.1 3 to be specific. This is the nitpicking and fly specking committee. The nitpicking and fly specking committee is what a less whimsical organization would call the rules committee. Uh, the uh, nitpicking and fly specking committee has maintains the list of continue resolutions and continuing effect and, and things of that nature. This year has submitted three proposals, the first two of which are standing rule amendments and are of a sufficiently related nature that the committee asks unanimous consent to consider them as a single proposal. Uh, and let me explain that further. There's a, they are listed as items 3211 on page 14 and 3212 on page 15. They are proposals to, uh, the second one is to raise the vote necessary for objection consideration from the current two thirds to three fourths. And the second would be to allow the motion to postpone indefinitely, and postpone indefinitely is effectively kill this proposal for the duration of this world time. Uh, it would allow that, it's technically not, not allowed at this time by our rules, you then you have to suspend the rules and postpone indefinitely. It would allow the motion to be made during the preliminary business meeting and would allow four minutes of debate time on the question of whether the motion should be considered or not and would require a two-thirds vote to kill the motion without any further debate. It would be a way, a mechanism for the preliminary business meeting to suppress motions, new business, at the preliminary business meeting without the mechanism of objection to consideration. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that those two items be considered as a single standing rule amendment proposal. Is there any objection? Hearing none, will be considered as a single item. I believe it is, uh, the, the debate is in our commentary. Uh, objection to consideration has its uses. However, the committee believes that the motion is being overused by WSFIS because we tied our hands procedurally with other ways of suppressing motions. Um, there are many items that the business meeting is, does need to clear off the agenda at the preliminary meeting. However, few of them are so vile as to need to be killed without any debate at all. It is only fair, in the committee's opinion, that we allow the, the maker of the motion one at least short opportunity to say why it is even worthwhile to consider it. The mechanism we believe would happen is that when a motion came up for its first consideration, uh, someone would move to postpone it indefinitely. And that person would have up to two minutes to say why we shouldn't consider it. And then the probably maker of the motion would have two minutes to say why we should consider it. And then a two-thirds vote could kill it at that point. That, that's our debate from the committee's point of view. Thank you. Uh, establish a debate time limit of eight minutes for this item. Is there any debate? I will go there where I would move to the yes for a motion to the vote. Right, I asked for objections and there were none. So I will they'll be considered as a single item. Is there any uh, debate on these items? Yes? Are you speaking for or against? Chris Hensley, the, re the reason I'm for this motion is, as, as you saw at the show at the beginning of the meeting, there are people here who this is the first business meeting. OTC has traditionally been used for things which either have, have been used for things which have interesting legislative histories or other reasons that we wish to object to them, that someone who is new to the business meeting process does not, and it leaves them feeling shut out of the democratic process, and that is bad for what's supposed to just as. Because we are an essentially democratic body, and if people are feeling shut out, we're not going to be people involved. And it's just, and you know, that goes against the democratic principles which we're supposed to be proud of. Uh, speeches against? Seeing none, we're prepared to go to a vote. Okay. Uh, Mr. May? 
I moved him. Good, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just asked yesterday. It's a good idea. I think if the Roll the mic, please. I can't hear you. I think it's a good idea. If the principle is explained, is to make sure there's a chance for people to feel at least the basic arguments have been aired. This is only going to come up on fairly contentious things, and I therefore move to amend that it should be six minutes of standard debate time rather than four. So it's still fairly heavy, but I think it, it means that that objective would be better met. Is there a second for this amendment? Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. may I ask a critical way to that motion? Well, are there other values besides six and four? Hearing none, the vote is an amendment on the floor to replace four with six. Uh, it's a little seconded to make that amendment. Uh, is there any uh, speech on the amendment, uh, including speech against the amendment? Yes? Particularly at conventions where we're using uh, one hour time slots and therefore the business meeting, the preliminary might very well be limited to two hours. I don't think that we want to extend too much debate time on motions at the preliminary. I believe in four minutes people have been able to pretty well explain why they think this thing is at least worth discussing or why they think it isn't worth discussing. And if we allow six minutes, it's likely to end up being turning into lots more debate time. Speech in favor of replacing four by six. <coughs> My name is Terry Neal. I think that if we end up with another agenda this big, that the business meeting organizers are perfectly capable of asking the con for a three hour slot. Speech against or replacing the four by six? If you can't convince us in two minutes that your proposal is even worth talking about, I really don't think that third minute will help. Uh, speech in favor of replacing four by six? Seeing none, uh, any speeches against or sorry. Uh, sorry. During, uh, assuming this motion were passed and we were operating under this rule, then during that four minutes, a, or at the end of the four minutes, a motion to extend debate would be in order uh, as any other motion to extend debate. <clears throat> uh, I, I think there's no more debate on currently in the amendment, so I'd like to proceed to a vote. Nobody seems to wish to speak. So uh, those in favor of replacing four minutes by six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed to replacing four by six, the nays have it. So uh, we're back on the amendment, uh, on the unamended uh, motion, which is 3.2.1.1 and 0.2. Uh, Move to call the question. Just a The timekeeper is learning how to be a timekeeper. It's like pause for a little bit. Yes. Just to clarify, we're also going to uh, this motion will include changing two thirds to three quarters. Yes, this, this will include both 3.2.1.1 and 3.2.1.2. So the motion's on uh, page 14 and the top, top one on page 15. Yes. This rule change would take effect at the end of the business meeting, unless by a special vote we uh, the third to decide to make it take effect immediately. At this point, we have used up half of, uh, actually one minute for each side of the minutes. So we have six minutes left. Okay, anyway, is there any further debate on this motion? Seeing now we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, this is the combination of the our concatenation of the motion on page 14 and the top one on page 15. 
Those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I uh, think the ayes have it. And so this is not going to take effect at the end of the business meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move to suspend the rules and have this rule change take effect immediately. There is a moved and seconded to suspend the rules and have this take effect immediately. Uh, is there any debate on this? Or, uh, I think it's debatable. Uh, okay, well, I think it's undebatable, so let's proceed to a vote. Unless somebody wishes to make it either debatable. Uh, those in favor of suspending the rules so it takes effect immediately, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? There being more than two thirds in favor, the rules are suspended so that uh, these changes to the standing rules are effective immediately. Uh, I slight pause for some to catch up. Consistently throughout the Constitution. And on behalf of the NPFC, I uh, make I move the adoption of that constitutional amendment. Okay, so this will, as a constitutional amendment, this will have to uh, come up tomorrow. Um, I set the debate limit at six minutes. And we're on, uh, we're at bottom of page 15 is a motion which extends through the middle of page 17. And uh, two yes, minutes. what? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, uh, six and two. Any other debate time limits suggested? <coughs> Eight. Four. Eight. Four. Four. Okay. Like even numbers today. Any other? Times? Okay. Those uh, hearing none. For the values, those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Leave the nays have it. Those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. And four minutes. Or so.
Okay, great. Well, uh, well, um, I, I don't have any objection to changing nominees to finalists, but if you look at the very end of this on page 17, there's a couple of places where candidate is changed to nominee, which I feel kind of just gives in to the, the misinterpretation, and I prefer to leave those last two as candidate. Um, so that's my amendment to, okay. to strike the last two changes. Okay. So this is a move to amend it to change, remove the changes to 3.11 and 3.11.4. Is there a second for this amendment? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, is there any debate? Seeing none, those in favor of this amendment, please raise your hand. Those opposed? The ayes have it, and the uh, Constitutional Amendment is amended by deleting the changes from 3.11.4. Is there any more business that is it, for which the preliminary business meeting can act on, on this Constitutional Amendment? Yes. So, I, I'm thinking, yes. Yeah. Is the debate uh, report complete? Yes, I believe that completes the Yes, that, that, that completes the nitpicking and vice making committee report. Right to make a, a motion to the left relevant to the committee report. In the interest of efficiency, I did not raise objections to these uh, being submitted by the committee, but it is my firm belief that these are outside the scope of the committee. And I move that the committee, the nitpicking and fly specking committee, be, be requested in the future to avoid submitting substantive changes. Motions with substantive changes. The purpose of the committee is simply to keep, keep records and to uh, make sure that our, our, our permanent co co codification is done and not to, make, not to make or suggest changes. That does not, in fact, prevent any member of the committee or any combination of members from making those suggestions, but it, it does avoid having them come up as a uh, privilege, uh, committee privilege. Uh, okay, so that's, uh, is there a second to this motion? Yeah. Uh, moved and seconded uh, to, uh, what was the operational word? Request. Request to the New Picking Fly Spanking Committee not to submit uh, to substantive changes. Um, this is something which people's opinion might reasonably differ. Uh, set a debate time limit of six minutes. Uh, is there any speech against? Seeing none, the way I should proceed to the vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes. Uh, it's free. Uh, let's, 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 okay, let's do a kind of vote. Established by the standing rules, uh, requesting that they not submit uh, substantive changes. Uh, I don't want to repeat the speech of the initial maker. There was a speech in favor by the maker of the motion. Uh, there seem to be any other debate. So, since the debate. Any other committee can do that. Just the Nick and Quiet Baker Committee can still do it. This is just a request. <laughs> Yes, it would. Right, so we're in the middle of voting, so we can't really do that. Uh, so, okay, so we're going to the Serpentine vote, which uh, we haven't had a chance to do yet so far, so we're excited. <laughs> Yes. 
concerning this thing about directing as right. opposed to requesting, if we vote yes, can we still amend it to, to take from request no. to direct? No, no. no. sure you can. But then you need to, to well, you know, the easy thing, like, there are lots of things you could do. I mean, for example, we could defeat it, then it would be, and then you could, well, actually, you don't really want to do either one. What you really want to do is, uh, is, is go either way and then move to reconsider. But, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, in the interest of making this as self-referential as possible, <laughs> put a motion to postpone indefinitely in order to do it. <laughs> We're, we're in the middle of voting, so we can't really do anything else. So, uh, so okay, all those in favor of this resolution, please stand. Okay. In favor of the resolution, please stand. The way it certainly works is we count off. So you say one, it's the one. One, two, didn't exist on the guide before. Um, so we're making slow progress, but gradual improvements. Anybody who wishes to participate, please contact me and I'll get you involved. Any questions? Thank you.
Um, I'm the interim chair of the committee, uh, the originally appointed chair, uh, for various reasons, was, was unable to continue to act as chair and appointed me to continue as chair. Um, we have two motions here, both of which can be passed by this meeting. I hope will be passed by this meeting and then with luck will then go away. Uh, the reason they will go away is that there is a constitutional amendment that covers making these motions unnecessary and if passed, and since the last year's Hero Committee recommended that they be passed, uh, this year's also hopes that they will be passed. Uh, if they're passed, then these temporary motions get to go away permanently and you get to stop having to listen to the hero people come up every year and introduce the same two motions. Uh, but we do have to introduce them in case the constitutional amendment is not passed. Uh, the first is to continue hero in existence with a proviso at the end that says if the constitutional amendment is passed, ignore this. So, I believe that the first motion is now on the Sure. The first motion uh, on page 18, short title, we, we Might Need Another Hero, is currently on the floor. Uh, is there any debate on this motion? Seeing none, those in favor say aye. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it unanimously, and the really hero committee is continued for a year. And the second motion is the usual extension resolution that says that uh, non-U.S. publication followed by U.S. publication gets to trigger an extra year of eligibility. Uh, and we can do that on a one year at a time basis. And this would be the one year at a time. Uh, so this is the second motion on page 18, short title, This Year is Model. Is there any debate on this motion? Yeah. So if, if the committee goes away, Ben, does this mean Sorry. 
Last year, the business meeting authorized the secretary to renumber sections. Uh, and all of the extension resolutions were moved into one section, since that was a strict renumbering uh, that the business meet that it wasn't the constitutional amendment, didn't have to be ratified or anything like that. And we had to adjust all of the motions to keep pointing at the right new numbering sections. We missed one. Okay. Any other questions for the debate? Seeing none, any objection to passing this motion? Hearing none, motion is passed. I move to reconsider uh, the question of 3.2.3.1 in light of what Seth pointed out uh, regarding uh, the previous, uh, uh, regarding the possibility of uh, the amendment passing the changes. And how did we pass that? Did we pass that by unanimous consent? Okay. Is there a second for the motion to reconsider? Hearing none, the motion fails. And that concludes the report of the Hero Committee. With luck forever. <laughs> Next, I have a business uh, 3.2.4, the formalization of long list entries committee. Uh, I believe the report is clear enough. Any questions?
Um, next item, 3.3.2, the Christmas Membership Types and Weights Committee. satisfy that concern. We uh, therefore move to uh, the, the constitutional amendment at the, uh, on to page 20, uh, WISPAS membership types and rates. Move to amend the WISPAS constitution by inserting a new section between 157 and 158. No World, no world Con Committee shall sell a membership, which includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2.1 for site selection for that world time. And on behalf of the committee, and in the absence of any objection, I so move that uh, adoption of that motion. Parliamentary inquiry? Yeah. Uh, what is that required by 4.2.1? It's complicated. <laughs> I mean, it's I it's site selection. How site selection, site selection voting fee is determined. Mm -hmm. Got it? Um, Of the calendar year of the convention, doesn't that kind of hamper the membership committee of the seated convention because they have to wait until? I, I, I'm just saying, there's a time frame in there involved. No, this is the, the supporting fee by which the, um, the, the selection of, of the seated the committee. So the, 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 this is intended to restrict all kind committees, and it's restricting the sale of memberships. Uh, that include any VISPAS voting rights. And the restriction is based on the, su the uh, supporting membership fee that was involved in the selection of that WorldCon. So by the time they are a WorldCon, the site selection fee, that was the, selection, the supporting membership fee that was used in their election was long ago determined. Ah, that is not what I interpreted that. It's somewhere that needs to be clarified. It is intended that the vote, when it says for that WorldCon, we mean the WorldCon that whose membership costs we're talking about, not the election that they're administering, Mr. Chairman. Well, then please clarify as saying. Well, would there be any reason to say it's been been for that world con, say for the selling world con? For that world con? Oh, so we have, how would we say the change to say for the selling world con? That, way, that clearly refers back to the sale in the previous Okay. Okay. Is there any objection to that change? Okay. Somebody can propose an amendment if they want. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think the interpretation the chair has announced is correct and it would be in the legislative history in the minutes that it was intended to be that world con so that there is guidance to future interpretation on this. Okay. Would this allow the world committee to give membership at no cost or not settle? Yes. Will you permit a world to give away a membership? This was not a sale. Um, On behalf of the committee, I object to this decision. It would be committee's intention is you could sell something for zero, and therefore, uh, I, if, if that is the chair's ruling, I feel the ruling of the chair. The chair has to suggest. The chair suggests that there be a committee to report tomorrow. <laughs> Second, no. So, so moved. No, no. Yes. 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 Yes.
this is a suggestion for a wording change. If there's a lot of suggestions for a lot of wording changes, I think the best procedure would be to refer to committee to report back tomorrow. I second the chair's suggestion. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any objection to so referring? Hearing none. This motion is referred to committee to report back to the business meeting tomorrow. Uh, one of the things that came up during the meeting, during the committee discussions, was as the, the, the report said there were lots and lots of ideas tossed out that didn't come close to having majority support that clearly deserved to be discussed. I moved that the committee be established and direct, regardless of what happens on this motion, that a similar committee be established to report back next year with, after further discussion and hopefully further uh, resolution. I, I believe there is discussion that should take place in this meeting. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Second. Yes. Um, yes. If you already established that the for next year has to be done to more the, the, we, we established that if there's a constitutional uh, amendment that uh, it cannot be referred by the, the preliminary business meeting to a committee except the report to the preliminary business meeting. This is not any specific constitutional amendment. This is just a general proposal that this effectively this committee be continued, possibly with new membership and new officers, to continue to consider this issue. Uh, and it's been moved and seconded to uh, create uh, a continuation of this committee in that will manner. Uh, yes. um, I'd love to move to add a, a bit of an ability to look at so it's suggested to add the ability to look into the price of printed and electronic communications and how that factors into membership rate issues. Is there a second to that? Hearing none, fails. Okay. Uh, you, you can't. It's already. You can't object to consideration for an amendment. Only an okay. initial main motion. Uh, the secretary needs a moment to catch up. This latest amendment uh, is over specifying the rules of the committee and is I think they know that's one of the issues to address and they are and anybody who's going to be dealing with it already knows this so we don't need to over specify what their role is and what they have to consider. Uh, speech in favor of the amendment? I think I would agree with the last speaker, but the reason I put it forward is when you look at the price of the supporting membership, which I think a lot of people would like to bring down, the key issue is how you, is whether you can supply just electronic publications at a different rate. Um, so I, th I think people are outside this, uh, this meeting need to know that's an issue that's being addressed. Speech against the amendment. I believe that the point of a supporting membership is not what you get out of it as an individual. Uh, whether you get a publication of print or a publication of email, it is to support the convention, right? You're making a donation. And so I, I believe that the cost of whatever benefits you get out of a supporting membership are actually irrelevant. Um, the price is fixed at a, at a level that will help to support the convention, not that you will not be attending, presumably. Speech in favor. Andrew Adams. Um, the issue, though, of the cost to the WorldCon 
of what a supporting member gets, which is somewhat specified in the Constitution, is an issue that needs considering when we look at that. You can't set, get any support to the uh, convention if the cost of the supporting membership is below what it costs the um, convention to administer your membership and, and send out things. So um, I think it's clear that this is one of the substantive issues, and I think it's an important enough one that uh, making it clear that it's involved in, in this committee's deliberations um, is relevant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's context since I was the original chair of the committee last time, and assuming its remit is extended on the same basis. Firstly, the remit inherited from two motions submitted last year that I think would have included this in a fairly broad scope. Secondly, we have passed a motion which will presumably ratify tomorrow to remove specific provisions that opt in, opt out of publications. Um, you know, saying it's really for the individual committees to work out their pricing structure. And I can certainly say that whilst, as Mark said, there were many different views within the committee, I think there would be unanimity that we're not going down the route of over-prescribing what cost structures should be. So for all those reasons, I don't believe we need specific direction here. The committee may or may not wish to look at it, but I don't believe we need to, to get into it. And I certainly don't believe, believe we can start substantive debate on it here. We're only discussing whether I, I think the specification is harmless but unnecessary. Uh, for example, I can't imagine the committees would be reconstituted without Martin involved, and consequently we can be sure this is going to be considered. I believe anybody who has a strong feeling on this ought to consider volunteering to be on the committee. Uh, this sort of committee works best when all the points of view are represented and uh, we can hash something out. So I, I, I think this is a good thing. I think we should go ahead and pass it to the It won't make any real difference in the <coughs> talk, I suspect. Question, please. Yeah. What are we voting on? Do this is to add the, explicitly to the committee charter the issue of the cost of print electronic publications. Next year. The next so it's just year. an amendment to the motion to refer to add this issue. For the next year. Next year. Yeah, oh, yes, this, is, <coughs> this is the difference. There's, there's the specific motion that came up as being referred to a, we referred to a different committee, we'll report back tomorrow. This is the general motion to, to continue a general committee to next year to consider these issues. And what we're on the floor right now is an amendment to the charter of that general committee that we'll report back next year to, spe to specifically mention uh, the cost of printed electronic communications and how those affect uh, membership rights. Did we actually vote on sending it? No, we haven't voted on the motion. We've been referred to a committee committee to report next year yet. We're still perfecting that motion. Ben. This motion. Um, with the Easterbrook Amendment, uh, the committee can consider prices, supporting membership costs, printed publications, etc. Without the amendment, the committee can consider prices, costs, supporting membership, <laughs> everything else. I see no reason to clutter up the motion with extra things that do not make the slightest bit of difference, and I prefer to keep things as simple as we can. Speech in favor. First, a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Chairman. A parliamentary inquiry is the, has the motion 3.2.2.1 been referred to a committee to report back tomorrow? Yep. Mr. Chairman, a parliamentary inquiry is there a motion on the floor with a pending amendment attached to it to continue the previously instituted committee and possibly amend its charge? Uh, yes. Okay. Well, Thank you. It's not quite clear it's a continuation of the committee or a committee but, of the same purpose. But that committee has nothing to do with the amendment that's been passed on to deal with for uh, tomorrow's meeting. Right. I, I ask this because I keep hearing people who, with question marks floating over their head. Mr. Chairman, I move the previous question in debate on all pending motions at this time. Is there a second? Second. 
All those still wishing to speak to any of the pending motions, please raise your hand. Thank you. There appear to be none, so we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, and we'll vote first on the amendment to add, expand the charter by adding verbiage concerning the cost of electronic and printed publications. Those in favor of that amendment, please raise your hands. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The nays have it. So I'm back to the motion on creating a uh, continuation of this committee uh, to consider the issues of membership rates uh, and classes. And all those in favor of the motion to create the committee, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Ayes have it. So the committee is agreed unanimously. So the committee uh, is continued. And uh, as with many of the other committees, uh, I'll be appointing the members of chair and so forth so people should uh, indicate their desire of serving to me. Uh, well, the, the appointments of the committees will be announced before the end of the business meeting Sunday. So, oh, yep, you know, but the earlier that you tell me, the better, right? So, it's 12.15, we have another 45 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure we really want to run all the way till, till 1, but we're now to uh, World Cup. Yes? Earlier, another motion to, to the forward discussion of this proposal to the the motion uh, printed on the agenda, in the agenda on page 20, was referred to a committee to report back tomorrow. I have not yet appointed it. Uh, yes, we do need to set time for it. I set a eight minutes. Uh, any other values? This constitutional amendment for the reporting actions. I set eight. What? It doesn't matter, it's renewed every day. So if you give it should, you know, we have eight minutes tomorrow, and if it should be postponed or somehow fall forward till Sunday, we have another eight minutes and so on, or whatever the value is. Four. Four. Other value? Okay. Those in favor of eight minutes, please raise your hands. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. It's eight minutes. Rollcon reports.
appoint um, other people to the board and perhaps even designate who those people are so that the, the legal issues can finally be resolved. Uh, we could certainly, if we choose to do so, pass a motion urging the Millfall Corporation or almost any other corporation to do almost anything or refrain from doing something. But our ability to actually direct them is um, infinitesimal, I would say. So I can't quite say it through. Does this body have any authority to seek um, equitable action in the state of Commonwealth of Pennsylvania against the nonprofit corporation? Chairman, uh, point of order. In, in principle, yes. Uh, no, this, no. Uh, body could appoint, well, it is a slight problem that we're an unincorporated association. So, you know, it gets pretty murky. And I was kind of asking for a legal opinion, and I'm not a lawyer and you are. So, <laughs> I would think we could, uh, we could uh, you know, create a, a, a committee of enforcement. To, yeah. to go out and bring an equitable action for some group which failed to follow our rules, but we can argue convincingly that they agreed to follow our rules, but that might not be a wise I, thing to do. I, I, uh, <laughs> finally, my last question, I apologize to me for delaying already on you. Um, would it be in order tomorrow to appoint a committee to explore the legal options that this, this as an unincorporated association has to see if we can break this election? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Having had to deal with Pennsylvania law, you're better off dropping dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may before that was all. I think the best thing to do is to move on to the next report. Six, seven years before you get So it's not a practical idea. Okay, next item of business is 4.1.2, LACON 4 report. Okay. I'm simply the only speaking member for president. I didn't prepare the report. Elaine, oh, oh, and also. Uh, on uh, a link of this report. I would like to explain an apparent discrepancy in this. Um, earlier we said that Skippy is uh, now completed this benefit fandom obligation due to um, the MPC donation. And then at the end of this, there's a small positive balance. And this is simply a timing thing. The, the report was prepared before that donation occurred. So it, it, it is now uh, complete, but not as a final report. Um, I can try to answer other questions, but it really is what it is. Yes. Yes, you Would it be knowing the report next year that you finally spent the money for Presumably. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion that I address this. I'm willing to yield. Mr. Chairman, inasmuch as the timing of the closure of this report was a few days before the final donation, uh, I would move that the business meeting, one, thank Skiffy for their donations in excess of LA Con for surplus for uh, various causes, including the health of the Swiss Market Protection Committee, and two, that the business meeting declare uh, LA Con for's Swiss reporting requirements fulfilled. I ask unanimous consent for this passage of this motion. Okay. Uh, is there an objection? Seeing none. Uh, so we need to make sure the secretary has the wording properly. On behalf of Skippy, we thank the meeting. Uh, next item is Nippon, which I believe has not. Uh,
prior to last year, they had not submitted reports, but last year they did. And so I was wondering if the expectation was that they should be continuing until they have paid off the debt? The claim is that they have paid off the debt. Oh, they did. They're only required to report on surplus. Right. If they wish to submit something to the business meeting, just inform the business meeting they can. Uh, but, uh, uh, next is uh, dissipation. So um, I would like to uh, mention we have a similar discrepancy, apparent discrepancy in that this report was prepared before we made the payment for the market protection committee. Uh, any questions? Who are you? Renee Walling, sorry. Yes, we, we still have fifty-eight thousand eight hundred and twenty-four dollars and thirty-three cents left. Well, I thought you said that didn't include the water protection distribution. We we do not mention the money we gave to the market protection committee because this report was prepared before that money was given to the I think the question is I think the question is do you have an estimate as of this instant how much money is left after these other grants? Is well, it for example is it zero? Five thousand dollars less than the minimum. Five thousand, yeah. Um, can you remind me? 1400 So, so well, there are approximately $50,000 left, roughly, more or less. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, at 
this point we have he gave me several tokens. Thank you. Uh, well, at our best estimate, we ended up with a surplus of about 185,000. Uh, we have started the uh, pass along fund distribution. We just uh, distributed uh, 20,000 each to Lone Con 3 and to Sasquatch. And we will be doing the same to whoever wins for 2016. So, as of this report, we're showing a surplus after those distributions of uh, whether it be 152, 268.81 less 20,000, so about 132,000. Any questions? Yes. On page 30, you show gross profit as equal to total income. I think that's just a mislabel. <coughs> it's a mislabel, yeah. If, um, Uh, I, I have to say at this point, uh, we have had great assistance from Kim Marks Brown on trying to make sense of the figure that our reported treasurer wasn't able to figure out. Our treasurer is a very good accountant, but she doesn't understand Worldcon accounting. So Ms. Brown has prepared this report for us, uh, but she's dealing with uh, software that she inherited. So some of the uh, Actual titles on here, the software created, we didn't. So, yes, that is, that is a bit confusing. Another question? Mark stood up. And I, I, I may be misreading this, but it appears that you've under uh, paid cash flow on funds. Do you anticipate increasing cash flow on funds to, well, it's too late for one time, but to cash flow? Well, not at this time. Uh, we, we do not anticipate that we have finished pass along fund distribution because we still have some expenses to pay. We think we've covered most of our expenses at this point, but um, if, you, if you look at the addendum at the end of this report, there's some additional expenses, some of which have been paid at this point but had not been paid at the time of this report. Um, We, uh, at the time we prepared this report, we had not finished some of the uh, uh, re uh, membership reimbursements. Uh, we've got several gifts that we had anticipated giving out to people that we have not yet purchased. There's about 14,000 that uh, our chair anticipates spending on those gifts. Uh, we had uh, dues to wisp us, which we have now distributed, but we had not at the time of this report. So. You know, there, there's still a few expenses that we don't know for sure what they're going to be. Ben? Uh, I would like to note that roughly 50, there's roughly $65,000 of additional expenses that we should be taking off the $185,000. That is correct. Uh, which basically means that it's really about $120,000. Left. And $320,000 grant will cover the $50,000. We because basically what has basically what this report doesn't include is none of the membership reimbursements were done yet, and there's a well, actually actually about half of them had been done at the time of this report, and at this time all of them that we're aware of have been paid. But when we made this report, that hadn't happened. Who was first? Warren? Uh, I believe that this uh, final line on page 32 is showing, including the two pass along funds first that's already made, uh, the total surplus would then be 152000 Right. So half of that would be about 75000 Well, the way, the way she lined this out was we based our original pass along fund figuring on the 152000 Now. Those first two 20,000s have been done. The third one hasn't yet. Right. Uh, we, if, if our expenses aren't, if our remaining expenses aren't as high as what we're anticipating in this report, then there will be additional pass along funds to all three. Even if, they Even if, they if, it is, if your report is correct, it should be 25,000 to each. If the expenses are lower, it should be higher than that. Correct. 
correct. We actually we actually figured it would be more like twenty three thousand each, but that number is is we, we, we hope to have this settled by next year's report. I'd love to say we'll have this all distributed by next year, but we'll see. Okay, Colin. I think the key point, and I remember saying this at a business meeting two years ago, is to emphasize to all seniors at the World Conference that their immediate successor that is the one to worry about most, the one that can do with the funds. And personally, when I shared that, when I advised, I'd say it is better to overpay a few thousand or a few hundred to the immediate successor than to take the conservative line and then maybe go to your successor. Then I'm sorry, you couldn't give me another five, ten thousand dollars and now it's too late to get the benefit. I think that is a shame for any convention that leaves the successor in that position and it has happened a number of times in the last decade and I would really like to see us stop doing that. Okay. I'm not real sure what I can say to respond to that at this point. <coughs> <coughs> it make you calm and make a good point. Any other, other questions? questions? Any other comments or questions? No. Yes. Uh, this is not just you, but for anybody who wants to have a financial report, which includes. Um, can I hear you? Mike. Mike. Loan start on, but for anybody giving a report that includes monies from sponsors, is a list of those sponsors available? Yes. Yes. Where is it available? That's a very good question. We haven't considered where to make this available. But obviously, we didn't give the the full breakdown on all of this. But uh, as far as sponsors is concerned, we can provide a list, and uh, uh, I, I need to talk to Randy a little bit about where we would provide this. We'll, we'll probably put it up on the website. Once we, you know, once we get a little closer, we just we just got the final figures here in the last month. Any other questions? Dave? Okay. Just a point. Unless I'm missing something, the largest portion of that is probably the pass on from the three prior world Cups. Yes, that's correct. Anyone else? Thank you. So having completed our convention less than a month ago, um, our uh, numbers are still a little bit in flux, but uh, current net income is showing us 40, just over $40,000, um, and we have estimated remaining expenses, primarily uh, membership reimbursements, artist payments, um, not that yet been made, a uh, few other things. So we're anticipating a surplus of about $10,000. Are there any questions? I just like to congratulate Ben on the speedy and efficient uh, recording, offering of uh, fiscal responsibility requirements. Any other questions? Thank you. So, after, after all your expenses are paid, you said you have to spend a surplus of $10,000. Thank you. 
question then. Uh, you confirmed that you do have more than 10,000 total members. We have 10,300 something. Or registered. Uh -huh. The question, please. The question is, yes, it has been entered twice. The sponsorship is a mistake. Uh, Speaker, could you restate the question, please? The question was a mistake in our financial report on income. We have sponsorship um, detail twice. It's not going to be a wrong um, form, it's exactly the same amount. So I will go check on that too. Some of this was retyped. Right? Right yes, well, I would not have been twice in this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Question is, is the list of yes. sponsors available somewhere? I believe it is, I'm not sure where. <laughs> As well, well, they, they are, they are never around the site for the process sponsors. Any other questions? Well done, very good. Uh, is the, the public application 
phrase that would have taken any. Uh, so, who uh, or else would like to be on that committee? Uh, Kevin Sandy is the chair, uh, Ben is a member. Uh, this is the one on public ratification of constitutional amendments. Um, so, If anyone here has not signed in, please do so. There are lists of both sides of the room. So, uh, the uh, committee for uh, considering the uh, motion on public ratification to affect the wording. These are alternatives report tomorrow. Uh, chairs Kevin Stanley, members are uh, Ben Yellow, Bob Wilson, Jeff Breitbart, and Jeff Mather. And Warren Buff, I guess. Okay. Um, the other committee is uh, the one on the uh, motion concerning the votes. Is there uh, any objection to making it be the, uh, the same committee under a different name? <laughs> the simplicity? Uh, hearing no objection, then the, 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 the same committee and chair are appointed to also meet under the, the name of the Selling Votes Committee to I know. This is the what to know to perfect the motion to report back tomorrow. And I'm proposing to be the chair of that also. I'm not a, I was a chair of that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm already chair of the You're the objecting to what I was trying to do. Sorry, That's yes. fine. I get to That's okay. John, I'll take it if no one else does. Okay, Warren can chair that one. Warren can chair that one. Uh, so that one's the same except that. Uh, Will you be a member? Yes, Kevin will be a member. So the, the two committees are really actually different. One has Kevin's chair, the other has Warren Buffett's chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Wesley is also a member of the second one. So I, I would recommend these groups gather uh, right after this uh, meeting up near the head table to coordinate when they could and do execute their duties before the business meeting tomorrow. If there are extra ribbons, please bring them up to the table. On the other hand, if you are attendee and didn't get one, there's a few at this corner up here. Uh, they'll be the same ribbon every day, so if you take one, that's all there is to it. So is there any other business for the preliminary business meeting? Uh, the question for the yeah. housekeeping matter would be unused cheat sheet. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll be collecting, the, if, you, if it's convenient to you, we want the unused cheat sheets for their useful for every session to be collected and put in the uh, box on the uh, front stage right there. Wait, what? <laughs> Can you keep the agenda? Uh, move to it. Any objections? Move to the journey. Seeing none, we are adjourned.